So chapter is Meyerman technique. And the topic is accuracy. So accuracy is the degree of deviation degree of deviation of any reading from its true value. Minimum the deviation, maximum the accuracy. Look, for example, if the true value of the G is 9.81, and the first reading is coming 9.85. And the second reading is coming 9.90. So this G1 is very close to the true value. And this is far from the true value. So this value is most accurate because the deviation, the different of G for this is 9.85 minus 9.81. So it's 0 0.04 approximately. And here, the degree of deviation, I mean the difference between the reading and the true value, 9.90 minus 9.81. So approximately it is 0 0.09. So this is the bigger value. So this is not accurate. This is accurate. This one, 0 0.04 difference is accurate. So the reading which is very close to the true value is considered most accurate reading. And number two, if two readings are given, for example, the reading number one is five plus minus one centimeter, and the second reading is five plus minus two centimeter, then we will calculate the percentage uncertainty to check the accuracy. So the percentage uncertainty in R1 is one divided by five times 100 because the percentage uncertainty is error over reading into 100. So it is 20% and the percentage uncertainty in R2 is two divided by five into 100. So this is 40%. So this value will be considered most accurate. Minimum the percentage uncertainty, maximum the accuracy. Now precision. Is the degree of deviation among the reading. Minimum the deviation among the reading. Maximum the precision. For example, the true value of the G Again, 9.81 and the different values are calculated. For example, the G1 is 7.64, G2 is 7.63, G3 is 7.65, G4 is 7.62. So these readings are far from the true value they have the large difference, so they are not accurate. No reading is accurate, but all are very close to each other, so they are precise. 
it's not necessary for the precision that the reading must be accurate. No. Yes, they are not accurate, but they are precise because they are very close to each other. If the reading is close to the true value, the actual value, it is considered, it is called accurate. But if the reading is not close to the true value, it's not accurate, but close to the other member, close to the other readings, then they are precise or the reading is precise. So this is the difference between accuracy and the precision. In accuracy, we will calculate the deviation with the true value, but in, in precision, we will calculate the difference among the reading. Next pose. This is bull eye. And we have to throw some draught. Suppose we have three. One, two, three. So in first attempt, if first hair, second hair, third hair, this is actually the target. So all attempts are not at the target. So this attempt is neither accurate nor precise. In the next attempt, number one here, number two here, number three here, no at the target. So this attempt is not accurate, but precise. And in the last, suppose the third attempt is all dots are exactly at the target. Then this attempt is accurate as well as precise. So this is the difference between accuracy and precision. So when they are exactly at the true value, exactly at the target, so it's a precision. If they are away from the target, but all together, then precision. If they are scattered, then no precision, no accuracy. Now, suppose this is the rod. Uniform and cylindrical form and its radius is R. And its true value is given by the teacher. Then students are divided, suppose in groups A, B, C, and D. And each group is asked to measure the diameter or the radius of this cylinder with the help of the vernier caliper. Each student in the group records its own value and write down in the notebook. After some time, this A group is called up by the teacher. And after collecting the data from the students, teacher plots the graph number of the attempts, number of the students at the y-axis, and the reading at the x-axis. Suppose the scale is like this, the true value is coming exactly at the middle. Then student one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine students, for example, each value is plotted against its number, number one student, this value, and number two, this one. And after plotting the points, then graph plotted like this. If the graph is like this, peak exactly at the true value and sharp peak then this group has accuracy plus precision. So this type of the graph 
in which the peak is exactly at the true value and the peak is sharp, it represents the accuracy and precision. So this graph is accurate as well as precise. Now number two group, group B, data is collected from B group. This reading here, number of the students here, this is the true value. If the graph plotted and it's coming like this. Yes, the peak exactly at the true value. So this group is accurate plus not sharp peak. So it is not precise. So this type of the graph shows the accuracy without precision. If the peak is exactly at the true value, so this is accuracy. If the flat peak, then no precision. Now, number three, group number three, I mean C group, this is the reading, this is the number of students, this is R naught, and after plotting the point, this is the shape of the graph. Peak is formed, but not at the true value. So there is no accuracy, but sharp peak, the data is precise. So this is the precision without accuracy. And group number four, the last one, reading here, number of the times here, number of students here, this is the true value. And it is like this. This is the peak. So it is neither accurate nor precise. So no accuracy and no precision. If the peak is not at the true value, it's not accurate. Flat peak, no precision. So these are the four graphs for accuracy and precision. Number one, accurate as well as precise. Number two, this is showing accuracy, but not precision. And next, no accuracy, but precision. And the last, neither accuracy nor precision. Now suppose there is a graph. Between two physical quantities, for example, this is the time at the X axis and this is the velocity or the speed at the Y axis. And your graph is this. These are the points, but few points are scattered around the line. Now in the graph, Scattering of the points, both sides of the line is actually due to random error. So do remember, scattering of the points around the line is due to the random error and the best fit line is drawn to reduce it, mean to improve the accuracy, best fit line is drawn. And at the time zero, the speed zero, but the straight line is not passing through the origin. So this X intercept, this gap, of the time is representing the reaction time of the observer. And the reaction time is actually the systematic error. So it is always present. So line not passing through the region is due to the systematic error. And point scattered both sides of the line is due to the random error. And the best fit line is drawn for the graph just to reduce the random error 
are to improve the precision. Topic in this chapter is estimation. We have to estimate some values. For example, question is estimate resistance of a filament bulb. So this is the bulb, it has a filament. So we will assume first the power. So the power of the bulb is usually 100 watt with filament or 60 watt, it's up to you. Either take 60 or 100. And the voltage supplied to a house is 220 volt. Then what is the relation between the power and the voltage? The power is equal to IV and I current can be written as according to the Ohm's law V is equal to IR. So I is equal to V by R. So V by R times V. So the power is equal to V square over R. So the R can be estimated by V square over P. So the voltage is approximately 220 and the power is 100. So approximately it is between 400 to 500 ohm. No information will be given, but we have to assume some value or values to estimate the quantity. Next question is suppose estimate the maximum kinetic energy of an athlete. So mass of the athlete on average, 70, 80 kilogram. And the maximum speed of the athlete, it is usually 10 meter per second. And the kinetic energy formula is equal to half mv square. So one by two, mass is 80, Speed is 10 approximately. So this is 40 times 100. So we can write 4,000 Joule, mean four kilo Joule. So we have to estimate different things. For example, now the question is estimate the volume of the human head. Volume of the human head estimate the power of the candle estimate pressure exerted by the elephant on the ground pressure under the knife edge so these are the few estimations which will be asked in the question paper. So we have to remember these and I will give you the list of almost 125 estimation and we have to learn them. 